Imagine buying a train ticket in Tel Aviv. You board a high-speed bullet train. You zip south, past the Negev Desert, past the Red Sea. But you don't stop. You cross a border that has been closed for 75 years, and two hours later, you step off the train in Saudi Arabia. This isn't a sci-fi movie. This is the One Israel Project, a 100 billion shekel, 27 billion dollar mega project approved by the Israeli government to build a high-speed rail line from the northern border of Lebanon to the southern tip of the Red Sea. But this isn't just about moving commuters. It is the most expensive diplomatic gamble in Middle Eastern history. It is a plan to physically weld the economy of Israel to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia using steel tracks. It faces massive opposition. Economists call it a white elephant. Environmentalists say it will destroy the desert. And right now, in late 2025, not a single rail has been laid in the desert. Welcome back to Grand Structures. Today, we are investigating the tracks for peace. We will explore the engineering behind a 250 km per hour desert train, the secret talks with Riyadh, and the $27 billion question, is this the project that ends the Arab-Israeli conflict, or is it a train to nowhere? To understand this project, you first have to look at Israel's inequality, not wealth, but distance. Israel is a tiny country, but it is disconnected. If you live in the periphery, in the far north or the deep south, you are hours away from the jobs and money of Tel Aviv. For decades, Eilat, the resort city in the far south, has been an island. To get there, you drive four hours through a barren desert, or take a plane. There is no train. It is isolated. In July 2023, and reiterated through 2024 and 2025, the government unveiled the One Israel Plan. The promise to connect Kiryat Shmona in the north to Eilat in the south. The goal is a 250 km per hour bullet train. It would slash the travel time from Tel Aviv to Eilat to under two hours. It aims to abolish the concept of the periphery. It essentially turns the entire country into one single commuter suburb of Tel Aviv. The budget is staggering, 100 billion shekels, or roughly 27 billion dollars. It is the largest single infrastructure investment in the country's history. But if you look at the economics, it makes no sense. A lot only has 50,000 residents. You don't spend $27 billion for a small town. Unless, a lot isn't the final stop. This is where the engineering meets the geopolitics. Just across the water from a lot lies Neom, Saudi Arabia's $500 billion futuristic megacity. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman needs Neom to be connected to the Mediterranean. Israel needs to be connected to the Gulf. This brings us to the Tracks for Peace initiative. The vision, pushed by the US and the EU, is to extend the Israeli line eastward into Jordan and then southward into Saudi Arabia. Imagine a tourist landing in Tel Aviv, visiting Jerusalem, and then taking a high-speed train to visit Petra in Jordan, and then continuing on to stay at a luxury resort in Saudi Arabia. It creates a Schengen zone of the Middle East. Israeli officials have openly stated that the Eilat line is designed to carry future cargo and passengers to Riyadh. It is the physical infrastructure for normalization. You can sign a peace treaty on the White House lawn, but a railway makes it permanent. It's hard to go to war with a country when your supply chain runs through their backyard. But dreams are cheap. Building railways in the desert is expensive. The route to a lot is an engineering nightmare. The train has to travel 260 kilometers through the Arava Valley. This is part of the Great Rift Valley. It is seismically active, 
it is incredibly hot and the topography is deceptive. The train has to climb from sea level to the high desert plateau of Demona and then drop down into the Rift Valley. High-speed trains hate hills. They need flat, straight lines to reach 250 kilometers per hour. This means massive viaducts or bridges and long tunnels to flatten the curve. Then there is the Ramon Crater. The train has to navigate around some of the most protected nature reserves in Israel. Environmentalists are furious. They argue that a high-speed rail line with its fences and noise will sever the migration routes of the ibex, the leopards, and the hyenas that call this desert home. The Israel Nature and Parks Authority has called it a disaster. They are currently fighting the planners over every kilometer of the route, demanding more tunnels to save the landscape tunnels that add billions to the price tag. This leads to the fiercest battle of all, the budget. As of late 2025, the Ministry of Finance is in a cold war with the Ministry of Transport. The economists have done the math, and the math is ugly. They argue that a passenger line to a lot will never make a profit. There simply aren't enough people. They call it a white elephant, a project that costs a fortune to build and maintain, but serves no one. The only way to make the money back is freight, carrying millions of containers from a lot to the Mediterranean, the Red Med concept. But here's the catch. A high-speed passenger train and a heavy freight train are two different beasts. High-speed tracks require steep banking on curves, super elevation, Heavy freight trains need flat tracks. You can't easily run both on the same line at high efficiency. If you optimize for speed, passengers, you kill the freight capacity. If you optimize for freight, you kill the speed. The government is trying to design a dual-use line, but critics warn it will end up being mediocre at both, too slow to compete with planes and too expensive to compete with ships. So where is the train? If you go to the Negev today, you won't see tracks, you won't see tunnel boring machines. As of late 2025, the One Israel project is still largely a paper project. The budget has been approved in principle, the planning committees are drawing the lines, some preliminary earthworks have begun near the center of the country. But the massive stretch to Eilat, it is frozen in the allocation phase, the money hasn't actually been transferred. Why? Because the country is at war. The defense budget has exploded, eating up the funds meant for infrastructure. Furthermore, the Saudi connection depends on politics. Until a formal normalization deal is signed between Jerusalem and Riyadh, the tracks for peace stop at the border fence. Israel can build the track to Eilat, but without the Saudi link, it remains a domestic dead end. There is one final player we haven't mentioned, China. Chinese state-owned companies have built most of the light rail tunnels in Tel Aviv. They want to build this line too. China views this as part of their Belt and Road Initiative. But the United States has drawn a red line. Washington does not want Chinese technology running the critical infrastructure of its closest Middle East ally. This places the project in a geopolitical vice grip. Israel needs Chinese construction speed and cheap labor to make the $27 billion budget work, but it needs American political support to make the Saudi peace deal work. It's a choice between the builder and the architect. The one Israel bullet train is the ultimate gamble. It is a bet that technology can conquer geography. It is a bet that peace can be engineered with concrete. If it fails, it will be the most expensive mistake in Israeli history. A $27 billion train that carries holidaymakers to a beach town, bleeding money forever. But if it succeeds, it changes everything. It turns Israel from an island into a bridge. It allows a child in Tel Aviv to board a train and wake up in a new Middle East. The tracks are drawn on the map. The question is, does anyone have the courage to lay the first stone? Do you think this train will ever be built? And would you take a bullet train from Tel Aviv to Saudi Arabia? Let me know in the comments below. 
And if you want to see the other side of Israel's infrastructure war, check out our deep dive on the IMEC Trade Corridor. It's the story of the ports that will feed this railway. Thanks for watching Grand Structures.